Yeah, I think let's look at the wide receiver group, right? Because I don't think you can win with this wide receiver group again. I, don't, I just don't think it's good enough. <laughs> I can't. I'm going to start this episode. No, you're not. What? Okay. Uh, side note. Yes. Pause for effect. <laughs> Uh, we drink a lot of coffee while we're driving. And we want to thank Mr. Rogers for being our partner in this video. Arizona Home Relocation Specialist back there. Um, yeah, it's snowing, it's wintry. It would be nice to have a place to go. Like Arizona. <laughs> Probably wouldn't be drinking coffee. Huge Bills fan. This, the colors are red, red, white, and blue. The red and blue is the Bills colors. Mr. That's Rogers why, Home. That's why, that's why his company's colors are that color, because he's a huge Bills fan. Can I, I, I wish I could do the, the readings that you do. Me? They're so on point. you damn right. Hey, thank you for, uh... uh <laughs> I mean, the Mr. Rogers home is the top 1% realtor in he, all of Arizona. Sean is Rogers is a loyal Western New Yorker. <laughs> Somebody has had to cut a bunch of episodes of that in there. Yep. Uh, 585 Farmy uh, asked in our community tab, we didn't do it in hashtag Q&A, our did. rapid fire. No, we, we, we gave him his yeah. own flipping episode. It's, and it's, a, it's three questions, it's three words. Is smoke gone? And I think this question kind of extends across the whole of the wide receiver group, not just John Brown. Um, I, I, my story on John Brown has changed a lot throughout the course of the year, and I don't know if yours has. Three words. Three words. Three words sparked the whole episode. Yeah, that's it. Is smoke gone? We talked throughout the entire season that this offense is different when John Brown is healthy. We said it. We said it multiple times. We said it incorrectly. Okay. It's incorrect, Paul. What? We were incorrect. Okay. Is this the is this offense different with a healthy John Brown? Yeah. Yes, it's different. However, the emergence of Mr. Davis may have written, it may have signed smoke out of town. However, as many times as we do it on this show, we have to A, remain objective, B, remember this is a business. Yep. Okay, smoke at $8 million will be the tr Trent Murphy next year. I agree. I think if you're paying John Brown $8 million, you're going to be at week four saying, why are we paying this guy $8 million? Exactly. If, if yeah. he's played two games and he's hurt or he has seven catches by then and Diggs has 27 catches right. you know, by week three. Right. But the point is this. The, your, your offense is different with John Brown in the lineup, a healthy John Brown. With the emergence of Gabe Davis, Cole Beasley, and Stephon Diggs, you have a four-wide set. Now, he proved to be 1A because – when you brought him in, you didn't have Diggs. The guy caught 90 passes for you, yeah. had a 1,000-yard season. Yeah. He proved he can be a number one for you. Then you bring in Stephon Diggs. This could be two years of the writing on the wall for John Brown. You know what I mean? This could, okay. Okay, you had 90 catches. They only had 90 catches in 1,000 yards uh, the previous year? 72 catches. 72, okay, that's right. Oh, sorry. You had 72 catches, 1,000 yards, and they trade a first-round pick from Stephon Diggs. For somebody else. Like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Maybe this could be something that was a writing on the wall, but the business part of it is that if he could restructure his deal, mm -hmm. he's here. Yep. But if he can't restructure, you know, the Bills really didn't push to try to restructure Trent Murphy, mm -hmm. and he kept him on the team. So yep. do they learn from their mistake this year? Right. Well, okay, quick fact. John Brown has never played 16 games as a member of the Buffalo Bills. Quick fact. Uh, he's only ever played 16 games uh, in his career twice. His rookie season in Arizona where he barely, I mean, he got 102 targets but 48 receptions. Um, and a, in Baltimore, 97 targets, 42 receptions. Boy, don't those numbers sound familiar. Right? Like, here's John Brown was, <laughs> I'm just saying, John Brown was brought in as a value player. You brought him in because he was the best that was available at the time. 
you really had, you were completely redoing your wide receiver. I remember that was, we were coming off of uh, Kelvin Benjamin, Andre Robertson, Zay Jones as your one, two, three. Like we were coming off of that. So John Brown <clears throat> looks like a unicorn compared to that, right? Well, let's not be remiss to what you said on an episode, Paul. I always get nervous when you say this because I say a lot of things and I really don't remember most of them. No, no, just a reminder for the nation. They were going after Beasley and Brown, thinking yeah. they'd got one, one of them. Yeah. They ended up getting both. Yeah. What you said. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So it was a gift. It was an embarrassment of riches. So by getting Beasley, it seems like he fits the mold of the EP system, the slot guy. Exactly. Yeah. But you end up getting Brown to replace the outside help, which made Zay um, expendable. expendable. Yeah. So you were able to ship him off to the Raiders for a bag of balls. But the point was that he wouldn't have caught anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I miss being in the car. <laughs> it's when so we're, quick. When we're, when it's we're, so quick. When we're doing the web, like when we're doing streaming, it's just there's that slight delay where you just you're just not always. We're just not always there. Like, eh. Yeah, if you look at it in that respect, all right, you, you, it was an embarrassment of riches. You got to see what Josh Allen was able to be with a number one wideout. But then you bring in Stefan Diggs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does smoke make a difference? Like, once again, I'm, I know I'm repeating myself, but does smoke make a difference to your offense? Yes, he does, because he creates matchups where you cannot just purely go double Stefan Diggs. But Gabriel Davis was doing the same thing. He creates a deep threat like Brown, but different from Brown. What right. you mean is he can create ver a vertical threat where you could throw it short, he'll go up and get it. Brown can outrun somebody. Sure can. So, yep. all of that stuff intertwines. He really is a great front runner. If you, not, he is. He is. He's he's really if you runner. don't, if you don't rework the deal, he's not here. But the Trent Murphy thing is always sticking in my head. He may still be here with the eight million dollar cap. Yeah, I think that's a. I think that's a very fair point, right? So, what would you say if I told you? that Buffalo with the first round pick at 30th go wide receiver, right? What's Stop up? It. Stop it. What if I told you? You sounded like the other. At 30. At 30 besides. Yeah. Well, 30 for 30. Like, yeah, 30. Oh, yeah, hey, 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 you're right. Because well, you, okay. you got Hodges in the hopper. So let's just review real quick, okay? Last year, just last year alone, at... 33, so first pick in the second round, at 33, T. Higgins, at 34, Michael Pittman, at 42, Levisky Chenault, at 46, K.J. Hamler, at 49, Chase Claypool. Okay, there you go. There's a list of guys who would be available at 30, right? Do any of that? What them... was 24th? Uh, as a center. Yeah, when, when did the Bills trade the pick up? Uh, the 20th? 27th. Oh, 27th. Was it 27th? No, when, when was it? It was wherever Justin, oh, uh, the 22nd, Justin Jefferson. Yeah. But, the, but, but the Bills aren't drafted 30, they're drafted 22nd. No, I'm so, saying the first round. Right. Why though? Yeah. Is that the first one taken? No, that was the fourth wideout taken. Fifth wideout taken. Yeah. But... Okay, so that's your point, is that five wide receivers were taken by 22. Wait, you're telling, I think that's fair. You're telling me that the LSU product was like the fifth guy off the board and had a productive first year? Yeah, it was just a part. Shocker. Hey, okay, Trey White. Yeah. <laughs> um, so wide receivers in the first round, Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, CeeDee Lamb, uh, Jalen Rigor, Justin Jefferson, Brandon Ayuk. Uh, he went at 25. Ayuk's pretty, pretty good. But the, the tail end of that was Higgins, Michael Pippen. So basically, the Bills. What you're saying is they're going to have the 19. <laughs> they're going to have the 1984 version of the quarterback class. Yeah, pretty much. The pick from for wide yeah, receivers. Yeah, pretty much. Well, what I'm saying is that I don't think wide receivers off the board at 30, right? I, for what you get, what you saw out of Gabe Davis, this team is often needs a bit more than the volume that Davis brought, right? But we saw Robert Foster fall out of favor quickly, 
right? And Gabe Davis doesn't seem to have fallen out of favor. Robert Robert Foster was there and was being used because they had no other option. They really didn't. Gabe Davis was used because he earned the snaps. So what if, like we said, Gabe Davis can play the John Brown role just a little differently, mm -hmm. and then Isaiah Hodges plays the Gabe Davis role? Uh, Hodges is not very fast. Like, Neither is Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis is a little faster, and you don't really know what you have in Isaiah Hodges, but that's a bonus player, right? That's just Isaiah Hodges' bonus at this point. He's kind of like a Starler Tula like. He's just, he's going to be bonus this year. Harrison Phillips was a bonus this year because you didn't have him the year prior. So Yeah, like we used to, who was it? Who was the third overall pick? Dante Fowler. When he was coming back to Jacksonville. Yeah, you the, remember, the legend of Dante Fowler. Yeah, remember when he got hurt? Yeah. And then the next yeah, year, Jacksonville camp. was like, hey, this is like our first extra first round pick because mm -hmm. we didn't have him last year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you got. I'm interested to see what Hodges has. Uh, the ghost of Duke Johnson or Duke Williams. I don't even know his name. Signed to a futures deal. He's still on the team. So uh, there was Jake Kumaro still on the team. You know, like, <laughs> touchdown Jesus. Touchdown Jesus. I, I'm just saying that I think you can replace. I don't, I don't think you can replace the player that Brown is, but I think you can redefine that role on offense and still be effective. I, Gabe Davis probably gives that to you. But Would you pay $8 million for an insurance policy on no Stephon way. Diggs? I wouldn't pay. Would you pay $8 million as an insurance policy on Stephon Diggs? Because this is the discussion that we have to have. Not that. That's, that's, yeah, it's not, it's not Brown to, it's not Brown to Davis, it's Brown to Diggs. Yeah. So. If you lose Diggs, not having Brown, are you willing to spend $8 million to have Brown on this team? Because he has proven to be a number one in this offense for you. Diggs pulls doubles. Brown, even as a one, would not pull doubles. So I'm no. just saying, though, the drop-off that you would have from Diggs to Davis versus Diggs to Brown. Oh, that's a great point. I'm just looking at it from the other side. Usually that's, that's something point. you do. That's a great point. I'm just saying, though, I don't know why it took me – 12 minutes to come up with this. <laughs> <laughs> the, would you pay to have an $8 million insurance policy on Stefan Diggs in case he got hurt? I don't see any scenario where John Brown plays under this contract. So, no. I would uh, not pay $8 million to have John Brown. I, would. I, I, I know it's a great point. I just look at where they are and where they need to get to. And I don't think I don't think John Brown fixes any of that for you. Listen, if Stephon Diggs goes down, John Brown's not solving any problems. You, you better have you better, you better drafted a running back at thirty. <laughs> that's what that's what you better have done. You better have drafted a, a, a running back at thirty. But I mean, we're back to chicken or the egg. You know, are you going to yeah, pay, gonna are gonna pay him Milano? Yeah. Are you going to pay Milano because you have Edmonds and Edmonds is better with Milano? Like John Brown, John Brown did what. John Brown did better than you anticipated him doing his first year. He underperformed in his second year. But of course he was going to underperform. Diggs is a target hog. So does it matter? You threw to John Brown 70 times this year. How many did you catch? 47? 40 something? Still pretty effective. Yeah, but I mean, if. If that's the role that you're looking to fill, I think there's a lot of different ways to do it that doesn't cost you $8 million. Well, I think if if you lose him, you're going to be spending 10 on any wideout you want for a year. So you think Cole Beasley's locked in? I don't know what his contract is. He's got one more year. Well, I know he's got one more year, but is, it, is, is his dead cap less than... Because uh, I think that's why John... People like to go... Well, actually, Beasley, Beasley might have been a four-year. Guys like to look at John Brown or like to look at the salary cap and be like, oh, okay, who can we cut? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's easy. You go to the top of the list <laughs> for cap hits. We're like, okay, who doesn't have signing bonus money? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, you're this is here. not complicated, guys. I hate <laughs> I hate to tell you this. Is not, we're not soothsayers here. Not complicated. Plenty of cap.com. Let's go there. <laughs> Okay, Beasley's got two years left. Um, you right. save 4.3 if you cut him this year. You save 6.1 if you cut him next year. So we're um, going to have the same discussion next year. We're going to have the same discussion about Cole Beasley next year. Um, which uh, Beasley is, I mean, he's, he's going to be 32 next year. So, I mean, 
we're not we're we're going on the road of Cole Beasley will probably not see another contract with Buffalo entering year thirty, age thirty four in twenty twenty three. You you're probably looking to replace him at some point, right? Yes. Um Isaiah McKenzie does not replace Cole Beasley. Let's just say that right now. Um but I don't see any way Beasley's not on the team. He played with a broken leg. I don't see how they would even have the soul to cut him. Um, Plus, this, the, the cap hit doesn't hurt you next year. Yeah. Um, Duke Williams, impact or non impact in 2021? Non impact. Isaiah what, Hodges, impact or not? I think he would. Okay. Because for the same reason you're saying Brown's going, they got him in the holster. I like Hodges. I haven't seen him in a while. I was hurt. But not a lower body injury, though, so I'm okay with that. you got shoulder as a wide yep. I, I'll take shoulder problems if, as a wide out. If okay, Gabe Davis fine. is your number two, if Gabe Davis is your number two, filling the role of John Brown, not as the same way as John Brown, but in the games that he missed, and then you use Isaiah Hodges in a Gabe Davis role, not stretching the field. Very Which I think is – Kind of the idea. There. Yes. Yeah. And then you got Beasley. I, I I'd be interested to see what that set looks like. Mm-hmm. If you don't do anything and you don't add anybody, but you just subtract John Brown. You just subtract John. But the problem is this: we've seen them a do that before, mm-hmm. where they don't do anything in the wide receiver room. Yeah, and it, that did not go well. No, but I didn't think they had this kind of talent before. <laughs> they didn't. No, they didn't. Two is this. To your original point. This is not enough of a wide receiving core to scare teams in 2021. Right. I don't know if you got enough to beat Kansas City. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you can walk into 2021 in the same position that you're in right now. You Gabe Davis takes over your de facto number two because he just has to. He just has to. You got to go out and add some speed, and that's the one thing that the Bills kind of did before was they built. They got not fast guys, but smaller, shifty guys. Right, because EP system, smaller, shifty guys, mm-hmm. makes sense. Mm-hmm. But um, I think you got to start. You got you got to add some real speed to that wide receiver. I would add speed, but here's what I would do: I would look for overall complete wideouts. Mm-hmm. Like I would, to your point, you always say route running is the number one thing. I think you're going to go look for route runners because you may not be in an EP system next year. That's a great point, right? If you if if Dable takes a job in 2022, what's your wide receiver room? Are you built for the are you are you built for the future? Because the EP system is totally different than what you would expect out of any other. Even though system. it's starting to filter out through a lot more teams in the NFL. Yeah, they're using concepts, but this is a full. This is the full. This is the the full show. You know, like this isn't sprinkling in concepts. This is the full show. Sounds like another episode. Hey, I got time.